If your laptop is overheating or you've bought a new gaming laptop and want to keep it running as cool as possible, then this is the video for you. The laptop I'm going to be using today you may recognize from another video, but it is a Clevo P641RE. Most Clevo or MSI or other gaming laptop models are going to be pretty similar in their uh, makeup and layout of the, the motherboard and the way that you disassemble and, and modify and remove the heat sinks and everything. Uh, however, if you have a pre-made laptop that isn't primarily made for upgrading or gaming like a, an HP model or even a Sony or even a MacBook then you're probably going to run into a lot more uh, problems with disassembling than you're going to see in this video. However, um, the general theories and methods behind everything are going to be the same. The first thing you'll need to do is gain access into the inside of the notebook and to do so you'll need to remove the bottom part of the laptop case a lot of uh, screws will need to be removed and depending on your model only certain screws may need to be removed But once all the screws are out all you usually need to do is pop off the bottom cover most laptops are made to snap together just because it's easier for the assembly line as they're being constructed but also if you need to fix or repair or modify anything they uh, they're made to come apart now if you have a laptop that has a battery that's able to be removed before disassembling, go ahead and remove that first before you take the case off. However, this particular laptop model, the battery is built in inside, so removal of the battery is uh, not an option prior to, to disassembling the case. But once you have the opportunity to disconnect the battery, that's the first thing that you'll want to do just to reduce the chance of electrical shock or shorting out any parts of the uh, computer itself. Now once you've disconnected the battery, it's always a good idea to just flip it over real quick and hold the power button down for a couple seconds to discharge any remaining power that may be left into certain components or capacitors just to make sure all the electricity has been discharged from the components inside the laptop. Once that is done, we're going to get to work. And hopefully when you flip your laptop back over, you're going to see something similar to what we have here. Uh, we'll have access to a lot of the components and you'll see the fans and most heat sinks are going to be made of copper. So you'll see these copper pieces, which are the heat sinks for the CPU and the GPU. And if you look closely to each of the screws that are holding these tabs on, a lot of the times they're going to be numbered. And those numbers are a chronological order in which you're to tighten those down. So what we're going to do to remove the heat sinks is to go in the reverse order of those. And on here, uh, my highest number is 6. So we're going to go from 6 down to 5, 4, and 3, and then 2, and 1. Now in my particular laptop model here, the GPU and CPU share the same heat pipes. Uh, a lot of larger models will have separate GPU cooling uh, heat sinks and heat pipe mechanisms and a separate one for the CPU as well but this one I need to remove all the screws and remove it together as one piece. A uh, trick that helps when removing these is to slide it a little bit back and forth because there should be some suction between the heat sink and the GPU and CPU die because of the thermal paste creating such a fluid bond between the two pieces to transfer heat most efficiently. The next thing you'll want to do is remove all of the remaining old thermal paste or thermal interface material. Um, I usually scrape it off with a credit card or just wipe off the, the majority of the residue first with a piece of paper towel just to remove the, the largest pieces before I start applying any thermal interface material cleaning solution. Uh, otherwise you're going to go through a lot of it and make a heck of a mess. So the best thing to do is just remove the largest amounts of these first. I also want to be careful not to nick or damage any of the components around the GPU die, so be wary of that. Now if you've got an older laptop and you're removing this for the first time because of overheating, the thermal paste will probably be a little drier and, and chunkier and um, a little more difficult to remove. Uh, if you're just trying to upgrade the thermal paste on a newer model, then uh, this will probably be more like a paste or a putty as you're trying to remove it. 
Once you've cleaned off the GPU and CPU die, the next thing you'll need to do is clean off the heat sink itself. So uh, scrape off any remaining residue that you can um, before we get to the fine cleaning of, of each of these pieces. Now the reason you want these as clean as you possibly can is because you want to create as close of a bond between the heat sink and the dies and allow the thermal paste uh, to be the only thing transferring heat between. And if you have old thermal paste or residue left over, it could create air pockets uh, and also the old thermal paste probably doesn't transfer heat as well. So you're going to have things inhibiting the, the transfer of heat away from the CPU and GPU dies. So you want to clean these as, as well as you possibly can. To do the fine cleaning, I'm going to use the Arctic Clean Solutions, and then also for the thermal paste, I'm going to use IC Diamond. I've gone with the IC Diamond route uh, because I prefer to use it on uh, notebooks. Uh, it's a lot harder to get into and, and change thermal paste in a laptop or a notebook, but the IC Diamond has a great lifespan and will go for a long time without needing to be replaced. It won't dry out anytime soon. It also does a great job of dropping temperatures. It's probably not the best thermal paste, but it is my favorite by far for cooling laptops or notebooks. So using the Arctic Clean Solutions, you'll use uh, solution number one. Just put a little drop on there and then I use a coffee filter for the finer cleaning of the dyes themselves. Uh, the paper towel is great for removing the large chunks of the old thermal paste, but you want to use a coffee filter uh, because coffee filters won't leave any lint behind like paper towel will. Now this is the part you want to be meticulous about. You want to get as much of the old paste removed, especially off the top of the dies. Um, I always try to get as much as I possibly can around the edges as well, um, but you're really wanting to have about a mirror finish when you're done with this. Once you've removed all of the old material, then you'll want to use uh, the Arctic Clean number two, which is a, a purifier. And this really gets any of the streaks off from uh, the first solution and also really leaves that mirror shine uh, when you're all done. And once you've got these all nice and shiny, you'll need to rinse and repeat and do the same on the heat sinks themselves. Once we're getting everything clean and shiny, we're going to apply the thermal paste and we're going to use the P method and allow the heat sink itself to spread the paste over the GPU die. So first you can see I'm going to do it here on the GPU and then next on the CPU. It really doesn't matter which order you do it in, um, but the application does matter. And we're going to need to use a lot more than on the GPU than we will on the CPU uh, because you can see the surface area size. Um, and the coverage that we're going to need between the two. You want to be able to create as thin of a layer of thermal interface material over the GPU and the CPU die, um, but you also want to make sure that you get full coverage over the entire dies themselves. 
Otherwise, you're going to have areas that are going to get hot and, and not be able to transfer heat away. So you want to use enough to cover the entire die, but so little that you keep as thin of a layer over the entire uh, die as possible because the copper is going to transfer a lot more heat away than the thermal material. Now when you replace the heat sink, you want to do so very carefully. Make sure you line everything up as closely as you possibly can. And this is where it is important to follow the tightening down uh, direction and chronological order uh, because that's going to depress the heat sink onto the GPU and CPU die uh, with even pressure to help spread that thermal paste out in an even uh, pattern instead of pressing too much on one side and pushing all the paste into one direction if you tighten them down in the correct order you're going to apply even pressure and spread the paste out evenly over the entire CPU and GPU die and that's pretty much it once you've got the heat sink replaced and tightened down you can reconnect the battery and then replace the cover or if you are able to remove the battery without removing the cover the battery should have been the first thing you removed, which will make it the last thing you reconnect. So um, all you need to do is replace the cover and then tighten it down and hopefully you've not lost any of the screws. Uh, make sure that when you tighten these screws down, especially if you have a plastic cover on the bottom, that you don't tighten them too much or you risk cracking the area around the screw. You just want to make them snug enough that it's going to hold everything secure but not so tight that you're going to crack the plastic case. And each of those screws should have a little blue piece of paste on the tip of it or it looks like paint and what that is is called a, a Loctite and that holds the screws in place uh, from vibrations when moving the laptop around since you're probably traveling with your notebook. The next thing you'll want to do is once you're done boot your PC back up and I like to use HW Info. You can download that for free from the web and run some benchmarks. I use Intel XTU to test the CPU. Uh, you can also use the Heaven benchmark or the Valley benchmark, which are also free ones for running to, to test the temperatures on your GPU. Um, hopefully when you test all these, you have nice temperatures compared to what you had before. It's always a good idea to, to check them before you change the thermal paste just to see what kind of temperature decreases you get. But that's it. If you like the video, please comment and feel free to subscribe. <laughs>